uh, Nick Kramer with NK Custom Bricks, uh, here to talk about the USS Wisconsin that I built a few years ago. Um, I built it in the 1 155th scale, which is just something I kind of came up with a few years ago. Um, doesn't really necessarily fit anything, it's just something that I started doing as far as like the micro warbirds and micro warships that I did at the time. So all the ships and subs that you see are all in that same scale. Um, kind of wanted to do something big, um, dabble in some of the, the smaller like World War II destroyers and subs and things like that. Um, always had the love for the battleship. Um, I'm from Wisconsin, so kind of near and dear to the heart. Um, so I decided to kind of give it a try as kind of one of those Uber builds, um, just something big and complex for me and um, started laying down the designs for it. Um, and actually started the, what I call the, the Whiskey Club. Um, it's kind of nicknamed from the actual USS Wisconsin um, as the Whiskey. Um, so that's kind of the, where the name of my discount membership kind of club for through the website uh, comes from, was when I was designing and building this. Um, designed it not as the World War II version, um, but the more the retrofitted, like, Persian Gulf era conflict as far as once they took all the anti-aircraft weapons off and retrofitted it into, like, the Tomahawks, um, the air-to-air -air missiles and things like that for shore bombardment and, and um, fleet protection. That's something really interesting with a number of the battleships from the World War II era is just how long they stuck around and all of those updates they did on there and kept uh, you know adding new technology to, to make them viable for future conflicts. Yeah, a lot of people don't don't realize that uh, the battleships served in you know the 80s and 90s, um, the, the few that remained just once they were retrofitted. But um, the USS Wisconsin and along with the other ones, I mean, they got a great history. Um, they made a great contribution, you know, to the war effort and everything else. Um, and they're just phenomenal ships, and they're just beautiful to look at. Yeah. So one of the hardest parts of any shipbuilding is the the hull design, and obviously getting a lot of tough angles and sloping. So how did that come together for you? I wanted to do the full hull. I you see a lot of people that when they design the ships, they design it from the water level up, so it sits nicely on on a table for display and all that. And it, I th but the, the hull, the shape include that, especially with the, the props and everything else, um, the unique bow structure. Um, so I tried to incorporate that, tried to get the, uh, the cross section shapes to kind of keep that as, as true to what it really was um, and trying to get the curves and everything else to match. Um, and red's an easy color. I would like to do like the darker red, but um, I think I would have had some problems if I tried to go into that that route. So, and then as we move further up, you've got obviously lots of lights, some good action happening up top there. What what all can you tell us about that section? That's again my uh, love of brick stuffs lights. <laughs> um, I wanted to put something in as far as a little bit more action. Um, got some of the uh, the secondary guns firing. The Sea Whiz uh, weapon systems got a tomahawk launching. The um, the bridge lights are up. I didn't get a chance to do like a broadside blast. I was really trying and really hoping to get that thing done and, and built this year. Um, that just didn't just didn't happen. So maybe next year. Uh, still a very impressive model here. How, how long did you say this is? It's just under six feet. <laughs> No, that's absolutely fantastic. But you've got some other great ship models as well on display. So let's move down here to the right, and we can start with this uh, Ticonderoga class one. So that was another one of the more recent ones that I did. It's probably the most detailed and complex as far as the, the superstructure that I've done. Um, I did a Arleigh Burke class a couple years ago. A lot of people like that one. I liked the size of the ship. It wasn't quite as large as like the uh, Iowa class battleships, so it's a little bit more manageable. Um, but it's it still had some very unique curves and lines as far as like the bow, a lot of details, um, and as a lot of history as far as the different just within the class as far as the different weapon systems and what what could be 
um, from whether it's the, the missile launch systems to the internal systems, the deck guns, the helo deck, all that. So it's kind of a, a research. Um, I know I have the actual Ticonderoga number on that, but as I designed that as more of just the general class of the ship. Um, so I think it turned out really well and yeah. I, I like how you, you display some of these models where you kind of build those stands up and it, it looks very much like a, a model display. I, again, that kind of all comes back to having that full hull. Um, the Iowa class is a relatively flat hull, even though it's a full hull, it's flat. So that could rest on, on a table very easily. Um, as far as the Ticonderoga, if I tried to put that down, it'd be resting on just that front bow and the, uh, the prop screws, and that, that ain't going to support anything. So. <laughs> so the stands are kind of a necessity. Plus, it just gets it up off the table and just makes it a little bit nicer to look at and, again, be able to see the undersurface a little bit if you want to. And then what are these models that we have down here uh, in the corner? Uh, last year, I just started kind of dabbling with um, what I call desktop ordnance, which is the I tried. I wanted to do more of like the life-size replica sort of. Just try a little trial and error with that. Um, obviously, with some of that kind of ordnance, um, it's very representative of uh, the shaping that I did with uh, subs and some of the aircraft fuselage. So it, it's kind of a good practice for trying to get those curves and shapes um, and then just trying to catch those the little nuance of the details um, so I did a few like the World War II style the modern bombs and as far as like the air-to-air -air missiles and the guided guided bombs at the other end you even got this uh, shell here with the powder as well <laughs> <laughs> yep that's the the smaller version of the Iowa class's 16 inch guns the base that it's on is is true is actually the like a silhouette of the one-to-one -one size of, of the actual shell. Um, and then as far as when I was doing the ordnance for the other stuff, I did the uh, smaller version of the powder bags and the shell for the Wisconsin. Now you've got like this smaller uh, submarine in front of the Ticonderoga class ship there. So uh, when, when you start to build uh, at that small of a scale and really uh, get into you know, the smaller amount of pieces, what, what changes in terms of your approach to the build and, and how you were able to do that? I guess I would say trying to find what works as far as for the details. Um, trying to find those pieces and that just aren't really designed for it, but kind of have the shape you need or possibly just whatever size, if you will. I mean, trying to get the, the smaller parts as far as like the guns or the, the mass and antennas, I mean, um, you're kind of limited on what you can use, so kind of build around that, but yet still trying to have it look like it's it's supposed to. So that was always kind of fun for me, with especially with that scale. Um, it's trying to still get as much detail, but keep it as small as possible. Mm -hmm. And you have just a, a massive array of builds, all display, on display, all along here. So as the, the public comes along and sees these at a show, what is their reaction typically like? Are they picking out a model they recognize, or, or what is that typically like? A lot of people don't realize that it's all me. <laughs> um, there's so many tables, they, you know, they kind of, some of it kind of blends into the Brickmania table behind. Um, so they kind of, and they see some of the Brickmania models that I've done. So it kind of all kind of blends in. Um, but I think my wife actually says it, you know, less is more. But I, I kind of like the the broad spectrum of, hey, look at all this stuff. You know, this is. But um, as far as like ex-military guys and like some of those old vets that come through, um, I really like when they come up and they got like stories of like what, what they did or, you know, they used to work on this aircraft or um, just kind of the appreciation of, hey, thanks for doing this one. You know, you don't see that very often. That's kind of a, a fun little pat on the back for me. It's, it's nice to hear that. Yeah, yeah, they appreciate someone kind of representing something from, from their life experience. You also mentioned Brick Mania there. So are there any examples of some of the, the kits you've worked on for them? Because I th they've been in recent years doing some really cool work with bringing in kind of outside designers like you and some other really talented builders to, to help design kits for them. Yeah, there's six of them here. The, one, the six that I've done the last couple of years for Brick Mania are here. Um, and they're the Wolverine, the Dragonfly, uh, the two Mirages, the BF-110, and then the typhoon here down at the end. 
Yeah. Very, very impressive work. So what, what is that process typically like then for you as a designer and kind of working on a more official kit for Brickmania? It kind of follows the same kind of path for me, um, except at the end, because um, I do my own instructions, I do my own kits. Um, it's actually a little bit easier for me because I'm not the one sorting the parts anymore. Um, I'm not having to pr print and cut the decals. Um, I still do the artwork and submit them. Um, they got a great bunch of crew. Um, Lando's awesome with the mini phase. You got Slam that's doing awesome printing. And then the, uh, the project managers, managers that help um, kind of guide us through the whole process.